Hello, my name is Victor and in today's video what we're going to be talking about is the ZV-E10 and how to shoot S-Log3 with it. Specifically 8-bit cameras. We're going to talk about how to set up the camera for S-Log3, how to shoot with it, how to expose with it, and how to edit and color. So I'm going to give you guys a free LUT when we're editing the video and also an enhanced way and a faster way to color it. And I'm just gonna teach you guys how I do it. You don't need to be an expert colorist. You can be a beginner and still shoot S-Log3 with a restrictive 8-bit camera. Okay, so let's start with exposure compensation. I usually set this at plus 0.7 all the way to plus 1.3. I don't want it to be too overexposed or too exposed to the right. So I just leave it at that as a maximum. Next up is ISO. I usually just leave it at 500 because that's the base ISO for this camera for S-Log3 and you want the cleanest image. And then metering mode, I leave it at multi because I want the camera to read the overall look and exposure of the image. Next up is face priority in multi metering is on because we want to expose for the skin tones. Okay, next up is white balance. Usually I leave it on auto, especially if I'm vlogging, but if I know I'm just gonna be shooting in broad daylight and the scenario is not gonna change a lot, I usually leave it at 5600 because that's a daylight color and so far priority set i just leave it to standard next one is that creative style should be standard and then picture effect should be off picture profile will set it at pp8 which is s log 3 for this camera and this is all just the default settings and didn't change anything with this one another important feature is the gamma display assist this will preview your s log 3 footage in rec 709 this will help you gauge your exposure better and give you a good idea what the final image would look like. Let me show you guys how to put this on your function menu so that you have quick access of it. And this is my function menu and you can just pause this, feel free to copy everything as this is what I use for shooting S-Log. Now that we're out of the menu, we can just click the function button and then go to this gamma display assist and you can quickly conveniently look at what the final image would look like. Now I'm going to teach you guys how to shoot and expose properly for S-Log3 using this camera. So there's two ways of shooting S-Log3 and exposing it correctly. The first way is the beginner friendly way which is going to rely on the camera and on the settings that we've set earlier in this video. The second way is using an external monitor for professionals and you can nail down the exposure on your entire image with it. Let's get into the easy way and for the beginners out there, we're gonna rely on the camera and the settings that we've done. So remember that we've set the exposure compensation to 1.3. That's the only thing that we need to do before shooting. The camera is gonna do the work for you. I know the metering on the camera and the histogram isn't that accurate to expose it. That's why I always recommend an external monitor, but if you only have this and your lens, that's close enough and it's mostly how I shot with the travel footage that you've seen in the earlier part of this video. So for if I really need to use this professionally, I would attach an external monitor and expose using false color. So another thing about the exposure with S-Log3, we're gonna always target for the exposure compensation from point from plus 0.3 to plus 1.3. And if we look at it right now, it's on plus 1.3, and this should cover 
most of the dynamic range and we're just going to expose a little bit to the right because again the noise floor on this is very very sensitive i wouldn't want this to go under negative 0 0.3 and below that it's gonna just have a lot of noise when you bring it back in post so if you want a clean and decent image out of this in s log 3 all you have to do is make sure that your exposure compensation is set from plus 0.3 all the way to a maximum of plus 1.3. I say that because plus 1.3, you have a little bit of leeway for your highlights so that it's not overexposed. You don't wanna hit plus 0.2 on your highlights because that's really, really close to overexposing the highlights. The second way of exposing S-Log3 footage, especially for this guy, and you, if you have it on your arsenal, is the, an external monitor. This external monitor is attached to the FX3 right now and it's the Atomo Shinobi. It's a five inch monitor that attaches HDMI and it has a lot of exposure tools for pros. One thing that I really, really recommend using for a monitor like this is a feature called false color. Let's actually point the camera uh, focus here and this is what it looks like. It's gonna show you a little bit of different values of the light in the entire image. And as you can see, the screen on here is actually showing orange, yellow and orange, which is, it's on the top range of the exposure values. If you see here, it's almost overexposed. If not, it's probably overexposed on the orange values and you won't be able to retain it. Close up. Turn it off, turn it on, and that's how it is. So I'm not gonna go over a lot of this and how to use false color. There's a lot of videos out there and that if I do, this video is gonna be like 30 minutes long. Again, this is a professional tool and if you do want to use your ZV-E10 as a professional, I recommend an external monitor with false color feature. One thing I forgot to mention is the ISO level and I would always recommend to shoot on base ISOs, especially for S-Log3 on the ZV-E10, because if you push that all the way to 1600, it's gonna have a noisy footage, especially in the shadows, and you don't wanna do that. Okay, so one thing that I don't recommend is using S-Log3 at night, because it just doesn't make sense, but uh, if, Let's try and shoot whatever I can shoot with the FX3 compared with this one right here. One thing also that I don't like about this is that, let's just say I try and vlog with it, it's not gonna capture that much light. So let's get started with the editing. So I'm gonna show you guys two ways of doing this. One is with a free LUT and it's a Sony LUT from DaVinci Resolve and it's a free program. You can just download it and you can grab this LUT. And the second one is with my own LUT and I've developed this so that it's like a one click, very efficient LUT. So you can transform your footage very nicely and easily into any editing software. So first things first, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna create a few different adjustment layers. We're gonna name the top one your Rec 709. And we're gonna change the color as well. And then we're gonna start with the bottom as balance. Next one is exposure. Second one, third one is skin tones. And lastly, your final adjustments. And if you really want, you can add another one here, which is your look. The order of this is very important because you want to edit in the log color space. So the Rec 709 conversion will always be at the top and the final layer, the final adjustment that the video sees. Because what happens is that if we put this as the very first step and we put this 
below all the adjustments, what happens is that we're editing in this Rec. 709 limitation. It's already compressed instead of working with the full dynamic range of the S-Log3. So the very first step is we're gonna use the Rec. 709 conversion and we're gonna go to creative and click S-Log3 S Gamma 3. Again, this is on the free version of DaVinci Resolve. So you can just download it, grab it from there and you can get this free LUT. And as you can see, if we go back and forth, it's already converting the footage very well. So the next step is that we're gonna use a reference point for the white balance, right? And we're gonna use this shoe that's being hit by the sun. And that way we know the color of the light source is, right? And we want it to be zero, zero value or at least the same so that it represents a neutral color. We're gonna go back to the actual footage and we're gonna mask it out. Go here, take this out right here. So now that we've masked out the shoe, we're gonna see here on the histogram that the highlight is blue dominant. So we're gonna go to curves, RGB curves, and this part is your highlight, this part is your midtones, and this part is your shadows, right? And since we're looking at the histogram and the highlights have a blue color cast, we're just gonna bring it down to match. 235, 232, 235, okay? And then now we're gonna to go to green. We're gonna match this to balance it out, increase it just a tiny bit to match the levels. It's a little bit too much. And again, it's hard to do critical work with Premiere Pro because it doesn't have precise tools to color grade. I mean, you still can, but like this is, this is like good enough, right? You're not doing big commercial work. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Okay, if we look at the shadow value, it's almost the same, so we're just gonna leave it at that. And let's see what we have come up with. Let's turn off the mask, and let's do on and off before and after. This is before the balance, this is after the balance. So now it, we have a more balanced image. If we look at the RGB parade as well, we turn that off, we can see that the blue shifts above so most likely the image has a blue color cast if we go back it if uh, if we go back and turn on balance this highlight value is almost the same similar with this guy if we look at the midtones they're almost almost the same but again we're looking at the overall image and sometimes like we're looking at different colors like the yellows and everything right Okay, so now that's done, we're gonna play around with the exposure, all right? So for me to look at this, uh, we're gonna try and balance everything out. It looks really lifted and we can see that on the histogram and the waveform here. I'm gonna bring down the shadows a little bit and usually, usually you just use the curves. And since now we're getting a little bit more contrast, uh, highlights, Bring it down a tad bit. And if we can see the face here, the face value is at 50 to 60. So we're just gonna increase that just a tiny bit. Right, exposure, highlights to go higher. And this is our face right here, right? Okay. And then shadows, bring it down again. And then now I'm not gonna to touch anything. I don't usually use contrast or exposure just when I really needed to, but normally I would just go to RGB curves and do the whites. And after that, we're gonna put the blacks closer to where it is so that it's not so lifted. Like we don't wanna crush it like this, right? And you can see that it's just compiling on the bottom. Uh, we're just gonna put a little bit of the midpoint on there and actually what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna bring the highlights because this part is a little bit too bright for me and it was a cloudy day so i want to recreate that image and we go back to curves 
and we're going to add a midpoint here. And this is where we're going to increase the skin tone level, right? You can see that it's getting affected. The, the highlights are getting affected and everything is going up, but we can go back here, bring down the highlights a little bit more and then go back midpoints. And then now the face is in proper exposure for its IRE. Uh, so the next step would be the skin tones and we've already tried and masked it here. And if we look at the vector scope, this right here is your skin tone line. And we can see that it's touching a little bit to the yellow side. So we're going to just go back on curves, U saturation curves and click this eyedrop tool with U versus U and click on the cheeks. Uh, we should, it should give you three points here and just adjust it on the middle. Look very closely to how it affects the vector scope here, right? So turn it off, goes to the yellow side and we want it closer to the skin tone line so that we are very accurate with the skin tones. Okay, so let's take off the mask and let's see before and after. You can now see that this skin tone is way better. It's looking more natural rather than like looking pale and greenish. And this is the final look. Okay, so now we're done color correcting and the next two steps is just color grading, whatever you want your footage to look like, right? So for me, I want it a little bit cooler, right? And then a little greener because I want that like vintage look. And then the looks you can go like, you can just add a lot here, just cine green, right? And then put it a little bit there and we're done. This is a good looking footage on an S-Log3. And that's how you color grade S-Log3 footage on an 8-bit camera like the ZV-E10. Let's look at the easier color grading ones and this is what I've developed and this is what I use to efficiently finish projects and color grade them, right? I've created my own LUT and it's a conversion LUT. And if we look at the before and after, it already looks good. It's very efficient. It'll give you almost like a final look already. And this is, a, this is almost like a one click LUT, but on footage like this, if we copy this, you see that the footage does, it doesn't look like it's done yet. That's when we're gonna copy the exposure and change the exposure here. We're just gonna try this again. And as we can see that this is like way too overexposed, and just the highlights is not looking as pleasing as I want it to be. And we want it to be a little bit moody and that just punch in a little bit more saturation in there so that the greens will actually pop up. And that's it, we're done. This is my final image with this LUT. Okay, so we're gonna do another one, showcase this, turn this off and here, it says actually almost done. What I would do is that I would just do another exposure and bring down the highlights a little bit and bring up the shadows just a ton so we can see a little bit of detail here. And this is, this is done already, right? The next one is this guy, another adjustment. You can see it's only the conversion LUT. We turn that off, we put the conversion LUT and I just wanna finesse this footage a little bit more. So we're gonna do exposure, reset this, and look at my values over here. Shadows, a little bit of saturation, and we're done. Like this is the final image and it looks super pretty. But let's compare the free version and also the LUT that I've created, this one, and then this. So you can see that my LUT has a final look already because I intended it to be that way, right? It's almost like a one click LUT and it has cool shadows and also orangey highlights so that we have that separation 
a little bit of color contrast on the final look. And I kept it a little natural so that if you want a more customizable look, you have that option. And if you are interested in this LUT, the link will be down below. And it also comes with a few different looks, which is your cine green. I'm just, usually I put it on 50% so that it has that look. Golden hour, mono black, and Peely Orange. That is it for this video guys and if you have any questions at all feel free to comment down below or join our discord group i'll link everything down below so that you guys can join a group of creatives that help each other out see you guys in the next video peace